If you are a birder and you're looking for a new entry-level pair of binoculars, I've got four really good options right here in front of me. These are all right in the $200 to $300 price range. And I've got the uh, Nikon Monarch 5s, the Vortex Diamondback, the Endeavor, the, the Vanguard Endeavor EDs, and the Maven C1s. And after spending a week with all four of these and testing them against each other and um, just really putting them through the ringer to see which one I would pick, my number one recommendation to you would be to go for the Nikons. The Nikon Monarch 5, uh, they're not the cheapest option, but they are the best option under $300. I really like the optical clarity, the sharpness, the resolution through which you can see and pick out details. Uh, I really like how they just feel in a very physical, tactile sense in my hands. The focus knob was good, it was responsive, and um, the edge-to-edge -edge clarity um, around the edges of the image were good for this price range. The Vortex Diamondback HDs are my number two recommendation. And I didn't like them as much as the Nikons because they're just not as optically clear and sharp. They are at the center of the image, but then as you move to the outside, there's a quick fall off into a much more hazy, blurry image. Uh, they feel really good in the hand. The focus knob is very responsive. It's got just the right amount of tension in it. I think it was probably my favorite focus knob of all of them. And, um, they're about 60 to $75 less than an icon. So if you've got a really tight budget and you just want something that's gonna be pretty good for as little money as you can get away with, the Diamondbacks are a really good option for you. Now the Vanguard Endeavor EDs, these are the, uh, I guess the Mark I or the version one, whereas the most recent is the Mark II. Um, Optically, I really enjoyed these. These had a, a warmth to the colors that the other binoculars lacked, and that was really advantageous when looking at darker spots like shadows. Like if you're trying to pick out a bird that dove into a bush or under a tree, and you're trying to pick it out of the dark spots, the warmth of the, the color and the glass actually helped to bring that out and made it easier to see. Um, what I didn't like about them is they just weren't quite as, uh, uh, optically sharp and clear as the top two picks. Now this pair of Vanguard Endeavors is my personal pair of binoculars. I've owned them for several years and they've held up really well. You can see the wear on the body, but the glass is still in uh, excellent condition. I've been very happy with how durable they've been. Now moving on to focus. The, we're talking about the focus knob and we're going to talk about depth of field. So how easy is it to bring your subject into focus and keep it in focus? The Diamondbacks, I think would be my first top, or just my top pick in that category. The focus knob has just the perfect amount of tension in it, in my opinion. Uh, it has resistance to it, but as soon as you start pushing, it immediately starts rolling. There's no play in it. There's no you know, unnecessary wiggling. And it's very easy to control the focus as you pull it in and out. It has a pretty good depth of field. In fact, the depth of field in all three of these binoculars uh, were virtually indistinguishable. They're, they're basically the same. The Nikon focus knob has a real rubbery texture to the top of it, which is, it makes it really easy to grip. And I like that. It's a lot more stiff though, it, especially right out of the box whenever I first ordered it. Man, this thing was, it was real stiff. It's loosened up a little bit over the course of a week as I've used it. I think it'll get better over time, but initially it's just a little too stiff for my taste, but there's no play or wiggle in it. It's very tight. It's very easy to control once you get it moving. And it, it was still pretty easy for me to get a bird into focus whenever I was using them. I enjoyed using them. The focus didn't cause me any problems. The Vanguard Endeavor has a, also a pretty rubbery grip, not quite as good as the Monarchs. Um, but once you get this thing moving, it's just as good as these top two. The reason why these are third is because there is just a tiny bit of play, a little bit of wiggle in that focus knob, and you've got to kind of 
overcome that initially in order to get your focus moving. And so I would say these are maybe tied for first with a slight edge to the Diamondbacks. Um, they were just a joy to use with the focus system in them. Okay, so optical quality for my top three picks. Um, if I had to rank these just on that one feature, well, they're already in order. The Nikons are the best, then the Diamondbacks, then the Endeavors, but these two are real close. The uh, Vortexes, the Diamondbacks have a better center of image um, sharpness to them, but then that sharpness fades very quickly as you move out to the edges of the image. Whereas the Endeavors, they're not quite as sharp at the center of the image, but they hold their sharpness throughout the image so much better. And so I, I feel like center of the image is more important for burgers because you're always going to put the bird right in the middle of, of your view. And so the Diamondbacks are going to serve you better in that. But if you were scanning a big flock of something, like um, you're looking at shorebirds along a beach, or you're looking at a big group of sparrows or a big group of blackbirds perched up in a tree or something like that, then the endeavors might actually be better for those specific situations. So it's a tough call. They're real similar. The point is the Nikon is optically superior to these two. Let's talk about the Maven C1s. The glass inside of these binoculars is really good for the price. It is optically better than the three that I ranked above it. And so if that's true, why is this one my lowest ranked binocular? It's because the focus is so tricky to work with that you can't enjoy the glass in them. The depth of field that you get is so razor thin that if I'm pulling out to focus on a bird, I always find myself overshooting it and then having to focus back. Or opposite, I'll be pulling in the focus and I overshoot and have to push it back. And I'm just constantly uh, fiddling with the focus knob to the point where I don't enjoy using the binoculars. I love the glass. Once the bird's finally in focus, the image is better, brighter, clearer than any of these three. But it's so hard to get things in focus. I don't enjoy using them. I didn't like them. I wouldn't buy them. I don't recommend them. I'll mention chromatic aberration real quickly because I know some people wonder about that. Um, these are all real comparable. They're all in the same price range. They're all considered entry-level binoculars. They all show some chromatic aberration. There's not a big difference between them. I had trouble getting these three or any of them to produce any real noticeable chromatic aberration. It never bothered me. Um, it just feels insignificant because they're all so comparable. So if you're wondering about that, none of them have bad chromatic aberration, but they all have it. Okay, so last thoughts on my top two recommendations for you. If you're on a tight budget and you just need a pretty good pair of binoculars to get you going, you're gonna be happy with the Vortex Diamondback HDs. Uh, they feel great in the hand. They're enjoyable to use whenever you hold them up to your face. They feel very immersive. They feel very wide open. And the center of the image looks really good. The focus is also really easy and enjoyable to use. Now, if you just want the best binocular for under $300, Get the Monarch 5s. Um, I just have nothing bad to say about them. They weren't necessarily the number one in all categories, but these are definitely the best uh, overall, the most well-rounded binocular in this price range. And they had uh, optically this unique characteristic to them that I, I don't know what to call it, but whenever you had a higher contrast in terms of lighting situation, where maybe you've got a bush and part of it's really sunlit and bright, you got some shadows underneath and the birds are kind of moving back and forth. The Nikons just handled that situation really well. They kind of like toned down the bright spots while keeping the darks really visible. I didn't notice that with any of the other binoculars and I really like that quality. It's part of the reason why these are my number one recommendation specifically for birding. If budget isn't a big limiting factor, get the Monarchs if it is get the diamond backs. There you go, guys. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and happy birding.